Contemporary metropolitan regions prevail when it comes to economic growth, industrial development, social integration and diversity, among others. This showcases itself in the impressive megacities with amazing architecture and high population densities, like New York, Shanghai, London, Tokyo and Chicago. But the image we have of these cities shows only one side of them. As urbanization increases and intensifies, the amount of success comes with a bigger amount of threats. In this video, we will set out the field of challenges for these metropolitan regions as the step towards the necessary changed attitude towards the connection to and inclusion of nature in metropolitan areas. Globally, cities and urban regions are experiencing a number of negative impacts of urbanization in combination with disruptive change, such as social segregation, climate change and new technologies. The environment in and surrounding cities and its natural resources and ecosystems are affected. In most urban areas, this results in a general condition of decline, neglect and contamination, which impacts human health, the quality of life, the well-being and security of citizens, and this in particular among the less privileged social classes. Furthermore, Accelerated urbanization causes the natural landscape inside cities, their peri-urban areas and the further hinterland to become more and more ecologically fragmented, which affects the environment but also their supportive, if not crucial, role to our society and economy. To create structure in this video, we discuss the problem field from three angles. The environmental, social and economic. Let's start with the environmental challenge. Too often, urbanization has a negative impact on health and well-being, as densification, suburbanization, changing land uses, increased surface sealing and loss of green spaces lead to environmental degradation. The ongoing reduction of green spaces and surface sealing leads to increased air temperatures, reduced stormwater retention, increased levels of air pollution, poor access to green space and diminished potential for outdoor physical activity. Moreover, climate change further amplifies the negative effects of these environmental conditions. As a consequence of these changing environmental conditions, a number of human health related issues can be identified. Reduced outdoor physical activity can lead to obesity, hypertension, and diabetes, as well as to associated psychological problems such as depression, anxiety and burnout. Increased air temperatures can lead to hypertension, dehydration and increased risk of cardiovascular disease, and air pollution in the end can result in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or asthma. The social pillar stands for the urgent need to rethink our cities. On a social level, when disconnected from concerns of human health and well-being, urbanization can lead to ethnic, cultural and class segregation, conflict, economic inequality and exploitation, experience of insecurity and lack of safety, anonymity and loneliness. Cities are not only dealing with external challenges, but also with their internal structure, which is often based on a traditional linear, top-down and expert-driven planning-oriented policies. In order to cope and shift to an open innovation model, they must address different forms and levels of communication and co-production with citizens. Stress, social isolation and exclusion are directly related to mental health and well-being, particularly in cities. The contact with nature, social interaction and strong feelings of community are known to help reduce these health issues. And it can be promoted through urban planning and design actions, such as increasing the presence, quality and access to green, blue and natural settings but also by designing streets and public spaces that promote neighborhood interaction, creating urban gardens and farms, among many others. 
third and last, there is the economic challenge, which looks at the progressive loss of resilience to economic models that underestimate the relationship with natural resources and have externalized environmental costs and undermine the delicate balance between natural and human systems. Eventually, many of the problems can be linked back to our economic system, which aims for minimum investment at minimum risk with a minimum time span but with a ma maximum outcome. Here lies the challenge to lengthen the time frame of investments and include long-term benefits in the process of decision-making. Besides the environmental, social and economic challenges, metropolitan regions struggle with the end of life of many industries, buildings, public spaces and other infrastructures. Here comes the real potential to redevelop them as part of so-called green infrastructures. Green infrastructures involve connected networks of multifunctional, predominantly unbuilt spaces that support both ecological and social activities and processes. Originating from landscape architecture and ecology, green infrastructures aim to maximize the inclusion of green spaces in planning and as a means of increasingly urban livability while delivering short and long-term resilience, sustainable development, economic growth and natural capital. They are part of the nature-based solutions, where they are understood to act as projective ecologies that explore potential paths forward to robust urban design thinking. This creates the potential to timely manage and value synergies between spatial practices, resources and the natural environment. The concept of nature-based solutions makes use of this potential while comprehensively addressing the triple challenge for cities in order to facilitate change.